Okay guys, um, thank you for watching the previous two tutorials, I hope they helped you out. Um, so in the last two tutorials we looked at shooting, so our player character would shoot at an enemy and the enemy would die. And then we made another script which enabled us to do parallax in background, so the background moved at different speeds and it also tied along. So today I want to look at something which I think is quite important for your game, uh, and something that I think adds a little extra to your game, that extra element, um, and it's a cutscene. So if you think of 2D games, if you think of cutscenes as 2D games, it's not normally animation, it's normally text-based, and that's what we're going to do today, we're going to create a text-based animation, um, a text-based cutscene. So what's going to happen is, on the screen we're going to draw a box here, and then on the box we're going to have some writing and then it's going to jump from one person to the next person and have a little conversation. It's great for starting off your game so you can get your story across or if you encounter something like a boss, you can have a conversation between you and the boss. And it just adds that extra element to the game. Uh, do as you please with this uh, tutorial, make use it, expand on it, make it work for your game. Um, and with that said, let's start it. So make a new folder. In Unity and inside the folder we're going to call it we will call our folder dialogue system dialogue system inside our dialogue system folder make a new C sharp script and we're going to call this C sharp script dialogue sorry it is C sharp and it's Dialogue system. It's dialogue class base, sorry. Or base class. So, dialogue base class. Double click it to open it in Visual Studio. I'm just going to drag this over here so I can see. Okay, so in your C sharp script, I'll just make this a bit bigger so you can so you guys can see better. We'll delete this. We don't need the update and start function. We will be using Unity Engine UI because we're going to be using some UI elements, so we need that in. And we're also going to use something new today, which I called the namespace. So namespace, and it's called dialog. So that's our namespace, we're going to call it dialog system. Open close curly brackets and then we will cut this and paste it in there. And all the namespaces, is anything within this namespace will be, can be referenced anywhere else within our Unity scripts. So anything that's in the namespace is all linked together, okay? So we need to first make a new function and it's called protected ie numerator and this is of course a coroutine and we're going to call this write text and open your parentheses and then type in a string so give it an, uh, give it a variable of a string give it another variable which is text and we're going to call this text holder Open close curly, um, open curly brackets, and you want to write a for statement, so a loop, so for int. And remember, we've been using this loop quite often now, so we need to make a, a, an integer. We're going to call the integer i, and then we say i is equal to zero, semicolon. i is less than input dot length, semicolon i plus plus. So simply make a new int called i. If i is less than zero, loop add one to i until i becomes more 
than input dot length. So if I becomes more than the input length, then stop. Otherwise, keep running through until and then adding one each time. And then you need to say inside here. inside our for loop we will write text holder dot text is plus or equals to input i semicolon and all we're saying is put the input text into the text holder element yield return new wait for seconds and we're just going to wait oh, 0 0.1 seconds and all that's happening here is it will wait 0 0.1 seconds between each letter that's being typed on screen so what it's going to do is it's going to type some letters on screen and it's going to take 0 0.1 seconds per letter so each letter takes 0 0.1 seconds to appear on screen. Okay, control S to save, back into Unity. Create in your canvas a new UI, so UI image. Press F so we can see the image size. And now I center it to the middle, you can align it to the top, the bottom, the left, the right, as it's here, but I always do it to the middle. I will make it about 300 by 200 or oh, sorry 500 by 200 to say let me just hit play see what it looks like yeah that's perfect for me so then I'm gonna call this dialog holder so this is gonna hold all our dialog in here and then I'm going to make another UI element and I'm gonna call it text and it's called dialog So our first text is always hello world. And this is what it would look like in here. So we need to make a new script that's gonna type out hello world for us. Yes, we've written it here, but we don't want it to be written in here straight away because it's just gonna display on screen straight away. We wanna write it so it becomes letter by letter by letter. So make a new C sharp script. And it is called dialogue line. And in this script, we double click it and open it. So, open up your dialog line script. Get rid of the start and update function because it's not needed. Of course, we're going to be using UI, so using Unity Engine UI, and then you need to do namespace dialog system. Open close curly brackets. Cut this. Paste it into here. Change model behavior to dialog base class. So we're just referencing the dialog base class script. We need to make a new private variable. So private string input. And all this does is references our string input. And then we need to then create a new a new function called void awake. And in void awake, we say text holder equals. I'm, I'm sorry, I've missed a variable here. So private text. Text holder 
and this is the holder to hold the text my fault so text holder is equal to get component of type text open close parentheses semicolon and all this does is stores the text component in the text holder and then we need to make a coroutine so start coroutine right text because we want to start the right text coroutine and then inside some more parentheses input text holder and this is just start the coroutine nice simple so head back into unity Head back into Unity. Check for any arrows, no arrows, okay. Dialog, we don't need hello world up here now, so we just get rid of that. And we type it here instead, once we've dragged the script on, so we just need to drag the dialog line script over here. And it's not shown for some reason for me. Ah, okay. It's because we've got private. So what we need to do is we need to serialize them. Not this one. So a serialized field will make it editable in the inspector, but keep it private so that it can't be edited outside. So just come as we see here, and now we've got input, and now we just type in hello world. As you can see, there's nothing displayed in our Unity UI here, but when we press play, hello world comes on screen and it gets typed letter by letter. Great, good, perfect. Let me just disable the music manager for now so he's not annoying us. Our next step will be to will be to make this more fancy for us, okay? So we want to be able to edit our fonts because we want to use a nice fancy font and we want to be able to edit our colour because we want to be able to change the colour. So let's open up our dialog base system again. So our base class. And in our base class, we want to just make some more variables inside the coroutine. So, our next one will be color, text, color, and font, text, font. Save that, head back into your lines, and make some new variables. So, let's first make a header. So, Square brackets, header, parentheses, text, options. So what a header does is a header will store your variables underneath the header in a nice organized way within the inspector. And I'll show you that in a minute. I can't show you that this, this second because we've got some errors here. So I just need to add in here, text, color. And of course, text font. It's not going to work because it's not referenced here. So first, we need to make a serialized field. I'm going to call this private color text color. And another serialized field private font text font. Changes the color. I spot the American way. Spot the British way. And changes font. So that's all this. All these functions, all these variables do is change the text color and changes the font. So we have back into Unity. And you remember I just said I talked about the header. It's now changed this and then I had a quick text option. So this is our nice little header now. And we can change the font color. 
and we can also change the text font. Now, important to note, if our alpha, the A, is here, is all the way down to zero, it's going to be transparent. So make sure you bump it up to 255. So 255, and then it's now fully solid. Otherwise, at zero, it's transparent. At 255, uh, it is fully, fully solid. So font, you can put your fonts in here. Um, and you should be able to change the different font types. Unity defaults to Arial. So you need to vet, you need to give it a font to work with. So what you do is you make a font folder. I've done a bit of a blue Peter here, and this is one I made earlier. So there's a font folder, and inside the font folder are all my different fonts. You can go over to your Windows folder, and then fonts, and all the different fonts that are already installed in your system are stored in this folder. Otherwise, you can download some from the internet. What I will do for you guys is I will make a resources folder inside this tutorial folder and it will link to the different resources we're using today so some fonts and some audio files. So for now I'm just going to drag over my DTM Sans because I like this font. I'll just drag it onto there and if I want to change the colour let's change it to red. Hit play. And it's not change colour. Why is that not change colour? How embarrassing. How embarrassing. Why is that not change colour? Ah, okay, because I've not declared it in here. So, this is a lesson for you guys. When you make a mistake, don't get frustrated because even I make mistakes sometimes. Uh, I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, no one's perfect. So we will make mistakes. The easiest way to fix your mistakes is to stay calm, troubleshoot. So instantly I know straight away that I forgot to declare the text color and the text fonts in my variables. So let's start doing that. Let's say text holder dot color is equal to text color. So set the color of text holder to the variable text color. So whatever is stored in text color will then be given to the text holder. And another one is text holder dot font and the same thing text font the exact same thing here sets the font of the text holder to the variable text font so whatever is stored in text font then gets transferred to font back into unity now hit play and the color will change and the font will change so hello world ah. For me, this font's too small, so let's just bump it up to 20. And now let's have a look. Hello, world. Good. So we can bump up the font here, the font size, and it will work. And we can also align here. But then anything else, so the font type and the font color, will be changed within here. So let me change this back to black. And then let's move on to our next script. And we're going to be putting some sound in. But before I do that, I want to change. I don't like this background. I hate this background. It's too white. It just doesn't work for my game. So I'm going to change that to black. So to do that, we click on Dialog Holder, which is our image, of course. In the image, in the inspector, we just click the image and drag it to black. Add component. So add a new component, and we're just going to call this component uh, outline. And it's just an outline component. And then the outline wants to be white, and we just set it 5 by 5. And then it's a nice border for us, so we can see. Now hit play. I think my alpha is set to normal. Alpha set to normal. Ah, obviously, I'm using black text, so I need to do white text. Hit play. And then, hello world. Wow, great. Works good. So, there are a few little things I want to do. I want to be able to add an image here. 
So whoever is speaking will be displayed on the screen because obviously there's no point in having a dialogue system if you don't know who's speaking. So what you want to do is you want to have a little image here to see who's speaking. We're gonna add we're gonna add a sound. So when the text is typing, it will play a sound, and the sound I want it to play is this typewriter sound. So. So for every letter that is typed, this sound will play for every single letter, and it will make like a typewriting sound. So we'll work on the sound first, and then we will work on creating an image. So to create our sound, we go to our scripts folder, make a new folder called core. Now you don't have to make these folders, but I like to make the folders because it uh, makes everything organized for us. Um, if you're not organized, you're going to get lost. So create a new C sharp script and call it sound manager. Don't open it just yet because we first need to make some um, changes within our dialogue base and our dialogue line. So in the dialogue base class, what do you think we're going to do? Of course, we're going to be adding some more variables to our query team. So in the query team, we've got font text font. We also want a delay. So font uh, float delay. So what the delay is going to do for is it's going to delay time it takes to write the text out because at the minute it's a bit too fast so we want to delay it we could delay it by half a second we could delay it by two seconds we could delay it by five seconds we could delay it by 10 minutes per letter it's up to you obviously you don't want a 10 minutes per letter so i think half a second is fine so we want to delay that so we just fight float delay and that's going to delay our our line typing and then we want to make a new variable called audio clip and that's called sound so float delay, audio clip. What's going to happen is we got to use, firstly, play sound. And we're going to set this in a second. But let's focus on the delay first. So in here, in yield return new, wait for a second, we type delay. And whatever's in the variable delay will now be displayed. It will now be controlling it instead so the delay variable is controlling how many seconds it takes go into dialog line firstly make a new header so square brackets header parentheses uh, uh, quotation marks and we're going to call this time parameters parameters and then serialized field private Low delay and this is time it takes for each letter to appear on screen make a new header a new header open brackets and I'm gonna call this header sound settings Another serialized field, and this will be private audio clip sound. And this just handles our sound. Okay, in the right start code routine, right, uh, right. Obviously, it's not working at the minute, so we need to say delay because we're adding our float delay and also sound okay so we've got the sound we've got all this little bit obviously our sound's not going to play because we haven't declared it yet but let's just make sure that this will delay for us so we've got our time parameters which is a delay so i'm going to set that to 0 0.2 so it's 0 0.2 seconds to delay and let me just drag our sound clip over so it doesn't give me any errors our sound clip is now dragged in and it should take 0 0.2 seconds to type each letter. Okay, now let me bump this up to 0 0.01. So it's really fast now. There you go, see how fast that was? So I think 0 0.2 is fine for us. It's not typing, it's not playing the sound, and that's all, all we need to do to fix the sound is to go to dialog base class. And where it's got here, we want to say sound manager.
dot instance. Ah, no, we don't because we haven't made the sound manager yet. So forget that. What we need to do is this. So we need to come back into Unity. We need to go into our main camera, right click, create an empty game object, and let's name this sound manager. Add a component, and the component needs to be an audio clip. Oh, sorry, audio source. So we make a nice new audio source. And then we need to go to our scripts folder, our core, drag our sound manager onto the sound manager once it was there. And let's double click it, open it up in Unity, and begin coding. Get rid of the start and update function, not needed. And let's start creating our initial sound manager script. So, inside our sound manager script, we need to create a public variable called public static sound manager. And it needs to be an instance, and we'll call it instance. And it needs a get and private set. Next, make a private variable called private audio source called source. And this is the audio source. Make a new function. So make a new awake function. It's a private void awake. Instance equals this. So we're setting the, in the instance to this. And then source is equal to get component of type audio source, upper cloud parentheses, semicolon to end, and set to the audio source. So all it does is it gets the audio source that this is stored, that is it, this is on, and then it stores it inside the variable source. And then in another script, we were going to reference source to play it. And we say public void play sound, open close brackets, inside here, audio clip sound. Source dot play one shot sound. So what's happening is it plays one instance of that sound clip. And it plays that one instance every time a letter a letter types. So go back into your base class. And inside your base class, underneath the play sound, the common you say sound manager dot instance. So we're referencing that instance we just made. Play sound. Open close um, brackets. Type in sound inside the brackets. Semicolon to end. And let's just simply plays the sound. Add back into Unity. Hit play. And it should now play a sound every time you type. And there you go. Great. Good. So. Our next. Our next setting will be to actually make a sprite appear here. So in order to do that. Right click on your dialog. UI. Image. So it's this nice little white image. And we just drag it here, make it a bit bigger, a bit bigger here, and a bit bigger here. This text box, it's not going to fit loads of text in. So if I just show you, if we type in, we type in hello world, hello world, hello world. So once we've written hello world a couple of times, when we hit play, You'll see what I mean by it. the box is not big enough. So that text disappears. And that's because our box isn't big enough. So we need to adjust the box size. Firstly, take your image out of there for now, just so it doesn't play with the image. And drag your box about here. Uh, here, here, and 
here. You could make this a bit bigger just to keep it all in proportion. And now I'll drag your image back in there to keep it a child. And we also want to change this to character image. Okay, now we hit play. It allows us to do a couple of things. It allows us to type more text in, but we can also make the text bigger. We record it to also center it to the middle. We can text center the text to the middle in here. So now we hit play. So yeah, so we can make our text bigger. We can change the text to 30 size, and our text change to 30 size. It's however you want to, whatever works for you best. So now we just want to make a script that would change this to the to our character. So, back into yeah, your Visual Studio, and make some new variables. In fact, let's talk about the variables in the dialog class. We want to actually do it in dialog line itself. So, we want to make some more headers. So, header, character image, serialize field, private. Sprite, we're going to be working with some sprites. Character sprite. This is the reference to the sprite. And then another serialized field. And this is private image. Image holder. Reference to the image so what's going to happen is we are going to take the sprite from the character sprite and we're going to drop it in the image and it's going to change the image to the sprite it's very simple to do we just make some more variables inside our function so we say image holder dot sprite is equal to character sprite and this sets the sprite of the image holder to holder, not folder, to the character sprite, and then image. Make sure you remember a semicolon on image holder dot preserve aspect. And it just preserves the aspect of the image because what would happen otherwise is the image would get too big and this is equal to true so this is a boolean which says that it's to preserve the image size the image aspect otherwise what it does it stretches the image so firstly we want to take the start coroutine and we want to cut it we want to make a new function and we want to put this function as a start function so void start And just paste our code scene into here. So let's start like that. Private void start. Okay, so once we've done that, we have an image holder, we have an image sprite. The image sprite is getting dropped in the image holder. And then we're preserving the image size. Okay, so head back into your Unity. If you go onto dialog, you will now see the updates. So drag your character image into the image holder and go to your sprites 
I'm just going to drop it in my character sprite. So obviously my character sprite is the pink one. And I'll drop the fourth one in there. Hit play. And it's now changed. Good. And you're going to change the tight speed because I think that's a bit too slow. So 0 0.1. So now we just need to make an actual conversation. So let's set the scenario that we've just bumped into an enemy. So first thing I'm just going to change this to because we know it works. So I'll get rid of hello world and just type in. Oh no, it is Mr. Fox. Oh God, he gone kill me. And then Mr. Boss is going to reply. Yes, it's me, Mr. Boss. I am so evil. Ha, ha, ha. Because obviously an evil person lost. Ha, 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 ha. And let's hit play and watch what happens. Our text is right on top of each other. So we need to create a system. So what will happen is... This text gets played, gets disabled, this text gets played, gets disabled, and so on and so forth until we reach the end of our dialogue. We also want to just quickly update this, so let's put the ninja frog as our character. And then we, we just change this to player, and change this here to boss. So we know that this is the player speaking, this is the boss speaking. If I duplicate this, I know then it's the player. If I duplicate that, I know it's the boss. Just makes it easier for us. So let's make the system where it will switch between each character. So in order for us to do that, we need to create a new script. Um, a new script in the script folder. In a dialogue script for that, I'm going to just call this dialogue script. What should we call it? We should call it dialogue order because it's obviously going to hold our dialogue and it will fall and drop onto dialogue order games object. So, dialogue holder, just drag and drop this onto our dialogue holder game object, like so. Double click it to open it. Open it in Visual Studio, delete the start and update function. And let's start coding this dialogue holder. So, it needs a new namespace. It's also using Unity UI. So, using Unity Engine.UI namespace. And of course, it's using a dialogue system. Let's make some variables. So, Sorry, let's not make some variables. Let's first make a function. So that's what we need to do. We need to make some functions. So private, i.e. enumerator. So it's another code routine. And this code is a routine we're going to call a dialogue sequence. Dialogue sequence. Open close brackets. And all this is is that all this would do is loop through each dialogue and display it on the screen, and then we make a for loop. So for integer i equals zero, i is less than transform dot child count child count i plus plus. So, as before, all we're doing is we're creating a new integer. We're creating a new integer called i, which has an initial value of zero. If i is less than child transform transform dot child count, so how many child counts child counts are added onto the transform? I plus plus. So, how many childs are on this object here? Well, at the moment we've got two. So what will happen is it will say i 
which is zero, so it runs through the first one, adds one on, runs through the second one, adds another one onto i, and then it knows that after two, there is not going to be any more child objects of the transform. So it stops running. And so once we once it stops running, we want to we want it to run um, a function called deactivate. Deactivate. Open close brackets, semicolon, and obviously this function is not going to work at the minute because it's not created. We're going to create that in a second. So this is going to just run deactivate the function. Deactivate the. It will end up deactivating the actual dialog itself. In fact, let's not make that yet. We'll make that in a second. So, before we do that, let's make um, a transform dot get child i dot game object dot set active true. So, all it does is get the child object from the dialog holder and set it to active in fact yes let's actually enable that again. that's my fault so we just need to enable that because we actually do need it to hit to access that function And then we will say yield return new no. wait. Now before we use wait for seconds, well now we're going to use a new method which is called wait until. So instead of waiting for seconds, we're actually waiting until something happens. So wait until open parentheses, open parentheses again, and inside these parentheses equals more than transform or get child. So transform dot get child of i dot get component of the type dialog line dot finished. Now this isn't going to work at the minute because it's not finished anything, and we haven't set this up within our variables. So let's make a new variable up here, and it's just a private pool finished get private set. So once you've set that, you then need to create a new function. So a new function will be private void deactivate inside this function we will create another for loop so for in t in uh, integer e i equals zero i is less than transform dot child count i plus plus and inside here we say transform dot get child i dot game object dot set active false and this deactivates our script and um, this would then would this would then deactivate each dialog line as it's as it's gone through. So let's fix the finished here. So private bool finished. Why is this not set? Private set. Did it 
first stroke or ah okay of course we haven't put the even side and now it should work um Ah, no, so this probably will actually need to be made inside our dialog base class. So we just place it in here. Sorry, that's my fault. And then under here, in the outside of our, our for loop, we just say finished equals true. So when it's finished, it equals to true. In our dialog line script, we need to write a new variable text holder dot text is equal to quotation marks. And all that's happening with the text holder text is it's placing the new dialog text into this. Why are we getting this issue here? Get private set up right. Public bulb. Ah, we need to be set to public. So now it should work. So. Hmm. Why is this not working? Let's see. Wait for seconds to learn. Join. Hmm. Oh, okay, so here's what we've done wrong. Our dialogue holder. Let's wait, there's a block, so that's fine. That looks fine to me. Ah, here we go. So go into our dialogue holder, and this is what I haven't done. Private, awake. So obviously what's gone wrong is, I think you guys probably realise this already. I'm doing a for loop here and a for loop down here. This is activating this one. But what's activating this? At the minute, nothing. So we actually need to start it. So start call routine. Otherwise, it's not going to stop, so you need to make sure that it starts straight away. So, probably would wake start coroutine dialog sequence. And again, this just proves that even I can make mistakes. So, hit play. And that's working. Two problems. This isn't ending, and it's also going way too fast. So we need to make a delay between each dialogue. So in order to make our delay between each dialogue, we go to our dialogue base class, make another variable. This time it's another float, and we'll call it delay between lines. And this is just the delay between our lines. 
So yield return new. Wait for in seconds. And we're actually gonna just wait for the delay between lines. Because we're waiting for it to delay between each line. So what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a delay of how many of the value we put into our variable between the lines so it just breaks it down so go to your dialog line in the time parameters make a new serialized field and we're going to call it private flow lay between lines time it takes for each dialog Play. Now we just type it in here. Yay. It's been lines. Head over back into Unity on your player, and you now have this little variable here. So let's have a half second delay between each line. Hit play, see what happens. And that shortens it a bit, but it's a bit too much of a short. So let's change it to 1.5. So one and a half seconds it takes from one dialogue to the next. Let's just have a look at what happens. Okay, so now we make a duplicate the player. Uh, I must defeat you, so I am king of dev. Hey, no, of course. That, that would be Rob. He's the king Now, we have two problems, or well, three. Firstly, it's not ending. Secondly, you can still actually play the game. Thirdly, our time is still running down. So, first we're gonna deactivate this. Second, we're going to deactivate the player. And by deactivating the player, we're actually gonna deactivate the time as well. And the reason we're gonna deactivate the time by deactivating the player is because if you look at our player, our time left is on the pickup script. So then the pickup script is attached to the player. So by deactivating the player, we're actually deactivating the play controller script. And we're also deactivating the pickup script. So both functions don't work, which is what we want. So firstly, we want to deactivate the, um, the dialogue itself once it's finished. So this is really easy. In the dialogue holder, once you've escaped, once your uh, once your for loop has run, outside of the for loop, you simply say you simply say uh, deactivate. So you say game object. Obviously, it's a game object. Dot set active false, and that then deactivates our our dialog. So deactivate. 
Let's run that. And then the end of finishing. So let me just re enable my sound too so you can see what's going to happen. Our game is still playing. We don't want the game to play until the end of the dialogue. So, in order to fix this, we go to the dialogue holder and we start creating a few functions, uh, a few variables. So, our first variable is a reference to the player game object. So, private game object player. And this is reference to the player game object. In our await function, before the start code is in, we want to declare what the player is. So the player is equal to game object dot find player. And what it's doing is it's finding a game object which is called player. And of course, our game object is called player. You have to type in the exact the same way it's displayed in in your hierarchy so it's about play with a capital p make sure it's play with a capital p in here lowercase lowercase in that case and this just is a reference to the player game object and stores it in the player variable so then we access the player variable by typing in player dot set active false We've now disabled the player. Then we need to re-enable the player once the dialogue has been deactivated. So we just say player set active true. And it enables the player. Hit play and watch what happens. So now, I am trying to jump and trying to do whatever, and my time to spare, my, my uh, place to save. But if you look here in the UI element, our score's gone, our time's left's gone, and our life is gone. So, our next point it will be to, what would you like to do next? So, now that it's disabled, it re-enables the character, the music. You can have your level music playing while the cutscene's on, however, I like to have different music for my cutscene and to separate it from the level itself. So, like, if we count a boss, we want some, like, spooky or some upbeat music or, or just something like terrifying music. So what we would do is we would disable this music manager and then we would enable another music manager which will handle our cutscenes. So, I head back into Unity. In our dialogue holder, let's make a couple of variables. So, firstly, let's make a reference to our game object, um, music manager. So we're gonna call it MM for music manager. And this is just a reference to this music manager here. Then we make another private game object called CM, and this is a reference to the cutscene manager. And we obviously don't have a cutscene manager at the minute, so let's create it. So right click on your main camera. Create time to rename it to. Um, God, what should we call it? 
What should I call this? It's gonna be a cutscene manager, so it's cutscene music, isn't it? So it's C for cut, scene, M for music, M for manager. So cutscene. So C M M C M manager. C M manager. Let's do that. Add the component to it, which is gonna be an audio source, because it's gonna obviously play some audio. Let's head back into our scripts and let's start playing around with the settings here. So music manager or mm is equal to game object dot find music manager reference to the music manager cm equals game object dot find cm manager We will then go into actually no sorry let's do it here. So underneath player dot sat active equals to false. You then want to turn off your music manager. So mm dot sat active false. That just turns off the music manager. But then we want the cutscene to play. So cutscene cm dot sat active to true. And then once the for loop is run, we want to set it to reverse. So mm cm equal uh, cm dot sat active equals true it's false sorry because we want to disable it and then mm dot sat active is true because we want to enable the level music head back into unity on your cm so your Cutscene music, just add your cutscene music. Um, open cutscene music, let's drag it into there. Now hit play. music for the level plays good that's what we wanted so if that text is going too fast for you yeah we can slow it down in our inspector but we can also do it so that it won't go to the next line of text until we actually tell it to and now we can do that by either pressing a button on the on our keyboard or on our mouse or if we're on mobile then we press the screen so we touch so it waits for a touch an easy way to do this is to go to your dialogue base class Comment out this, so comment out, we don't need it no more, and we just do a new yield, return, new, wait until, and then we're actually waiting until we get an input, dot get, button down, fire one. So all we're doing is we're waiting until we get the fire one. Why is this not working? Because I spelled yield wrong. Again, make sure you spell everything right, otherwise it's not going to work. Is it open brackets? No, 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 no. I'll try it. Why is this not working? Why is this not working? Hmm. Ah, okay. Stupid mate, it equals more than. So, it will not work. So, let's just disable this one for now and this one so it just goes faster for us. But, let's hit play. that doesn't work so we need to actually enable this and enable this
Oh, sorry, it will work. <laughs> so now I've just clicked my mouse button. It's moving on to the next. So. And it ends. So there we go, that, that, that covers that. Um, you can add more to the script if you want to. Um, how about making it so when you click the fire for the first time, it actually makes the text go straight through and just skips the text. And then you can click it again to go on to the next, um, the next line of dialogue. That's something that you can think about. Uh, search it on YouTube, search it on Google, you could probably find it on there. Um, but that's all for this lesson, or this tutorial. Uh, and the next tutorial, I've got a couple of things that, I want to show you because um, I just want to give you about another three or four more tutorials. Uh, so one thing we're doing is next we will do a save system so that your your players can actually save where their progress in between levels. I want to tidy up the user interface. So at the minute it's just plain text and it's not very nice. Let me just this be a nice little simple tutorial just to add like a clock there and the heart there and whatnot just to make it more tidier and more appealing. And then I want to do another tutorial, which is the bouncing platforms. So I want you to have a platform like these, but they will bounce, so you can bounce on it. Uh, and we can actually animate these platforms as well to move up and down, left to right, and then get our player to actually stick to the platform as they move, as they move left or right, up or down. So I think that's what we're going to cover in the next couple of tutorials. Um, I hope you guys are learning something new from this. Um, any questions, fire away. Um, send me an email if you've got me an email. Um, I hope you're enjoying your study week. I hope you're studying hard. And I will see you on November the 9th when you guys are back. Thank you.